Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. I also hope you guys are ready for another fun algorithm today. So what is it that we are going to implement today? Uh, basically, we're going to look at the factorial function. And uh, basically, this is how factorials work. If you take a factorial of, let's say, 3, you get 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And if you take a factorial of 5, you get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. So the interesting thing about factorials uh, in, I guess, in Swift is that there's a couple of ways of implementing it. So first way is to use a loop. And then the second one is the more interesting one of the two. And you can use a uh, recursion to actually implement a factorial. So for some of you that have never encountered a uh, recursion before, uh, we're going to take a look at what it is exactly. So let's go ahead and uh, do the implementation of a loop style factorial inside of Xcode right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, start a playground by clicking that little button down there. And then let's just call it factorial here. <clears throat> Create it. Next. And make sure you just store it somewhere in your hard drive. It does not matter so much where you put it. Expand this little editor all the way out to the right. And here is what I have inside of uh, playgrounds. So you can do uh, very simple things like print statements like this. And this actually just prints out one, two, three on the right side. But more useful to us would be this console down here by uh, pressing this little top right icon and pulls out this little bottom menu that shows us exactly what our code is doing. All right, so let's move on and create our factorial function by just doing func factorial of value like so. And for this value, the type is going to be an unsigned integer and it returns an unsigned integer. Basically, a, a uint, uh, an unsigned integer, is a non-value or non-negative uh, integer value. All right, so for this function, let's just return one for now. And basically, I want to actually print out factorial of, let's say, three right here. Now, that's going to return one down here and also to the right there. And let's go ahead and implement the loop style of a factorial, which uh, here's how you do it. Okay, let's see, what should I do first? Let's execute a loop by using a for, and inside of for, we'll do i in one dot 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 value. I'm gonna print out i for now. So <laughs> inside of this loop, we basically print out one, two, three, and then this kind of returns the uh, one at the very bottom. So basically, if I do a factorial of three like this, we just get one, two, three. So uh, pretty basic for loop. And the idea of a factorial is you want to actually uh, multiply all the numbers together and you want to return the product of all of these multiplications. Now, the way to do that is to create a product variable right above and set it to one. Inside of the loop, you just want to do product equals product times i, like so. And let's see. What we need to fix is this product variable right here. You actually need to declare it as an unsigned integer as well. Now, <clears throat> let's comment out this print statement here, and we'll just return the product at the very end of this factorial function. So essentially what you get is factorial, uh, factorial of value three is three times two times one, which is a six right here. And then if you take the factorial of four, you should get 24, which is six times four, and then Factorial of five is that times five, so you get 120. So pretty, uh, pretty simple and straightforward and basic. It actually takes, let's see, about five lines of code right now. So one thing you have to worry about is what happens when you do factorial of zero, and it says that you can't <coughs> form range with n less than start. Basically, one right here and value of zero coming in uh, is not a valid way to start a for loop. So for those of you that uh, remember what a factorial of zero is, is actually one. So you just have to check if value equals zero like that. Just turn one. And then you get factorial of zero is one right here. So let's bring back the five and we get 120 back. It's pretty simple. It's about seven lines of code or so. Now, what if I were to tell you that a factorial function, uh, you can implement it very easily without all of this 
uh, code down here. And basically, the method I'm going to use is called recursion. So I'm going to call this recursive, if I can spell it correctly, recursive factorial of value. And it's going to have the exact same parameters. Unsigned integer returning a, let's see, unsigned integer like so. Let's return one for now. Again, very similar like what we did before. So let's do recursive factorial of three again. Okay. So what is it that we want to do inside of recursive uh, factorial? Well, first we need to do one thing. We'll do the same thing of if value equals zero, we just return one, very similar to the standard for loop factorial. And so what goes down here? Uh, basically recursion is a little trippy and uh, the best way to explain it to you is to actually just type in what we need to uh, recur do, perform the recursion on. And the uh, implementation looks like this. So we'll do value times recursive factorial of value minus one. Okay. So that's all we need to implement this factorial function. Uh, we kind of eliminate this entire for loop and then we perform recursion on line 25 right here. And if we do recursion of four, uh, you get that. And then recursive factorial of five, you get 120. So let's do six, you get 720. So that looks pretty good. Now, uh, let's see, how can I explain how this works here? So let's just very simply print out the value every time we are inside of this recursive factorial function, okay? So let's take an easier example first, and let's just do one for now. So basically, uh, the recursive factorial of one comes into this function, and then we skip this uh, check right here because it's not zero, and one is what value is. So we return value of one times recursive factorial of one minus one, which is zero, and then you get the return value of one right here. So it's one times one. That's how we get the recursive factorial of one. So quickly, let's go through the example of two. So what happens here? The value of two uh, goes inside of this recursive factorial function and value at this point is two. So we get to line 27 and we return the value of two times recursive factorial of uh, two minus one, which is one. So it goes back inside of this loop right here. So it's, uh, let's see, what is it? So value of one goes back into this function and then you get one times uh, value of uh, one minus one, which is zero. So you get one times essentially one when you come back into the function. And uh, the moment you uh, unwrap the recursion, you get two times one times one, which is two, right? That's how you get two. And essentially that's how this uh, recursion works. So if you look at the recursive uh, factorial of five, what you get is you get five times four times three times two times one which is all of these printed values down below. Uh, all right, that is pretty much how recursion works. It does take a little bit of, uh, takes a little bit of thought and takes a little bit of tracking in the mind mentally to kind of follow how the recursion unwraps itself at the very end. And recursion always, uh, recursion works only when you have a terminating a case that you pretty much specify on the top and the terminating condition is when value equals a zero and you get the uh, return value of one and then that kind of kicks back the recursion and then it unwraps itself and all the magic kind of happens from that point on. All right, recursive factorial. This is actually a very interesting problem and whenever I interview uh, junior candidates for a programming job, I kind of throw this question out there and see if they can do the for loop uh, implementation. And then if they can do the recursive implementation, then you know, that's uh, maybe some bonus, bonus points for them. So hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to thumbs up if you do. And uh, also hit the subscribe button if you want to get more notifications on uh, future updates to this fun uh, algorithms series. Okay. Uh, enjoy your day and goodbye. Thanks.